Hi folks. In this video, I'm going to review the XMAX 3, which is a new industrial FDM 3D printer from Kidi that uses a Core XY arrangement, clipper firmware, and input shaping to achieve high accuracy at much higher print speeds than a typical hobby printer. This machine is quite a bit heavier than my hobby printers, weighing around 60 pounds. But that's because the enclosure is wrapped around a rigid all-metal frame and has a huge print volume of 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters, which is going to be perfect for printing some large e-moto parts later in this video. The chamber can also reach up to 65 degrees Celsius and has a circulating fan to help distribute heat evenly for better results when printing with ABS and carbon fiber infused filaments. Included with the printer is a box of tools and accessories like a high temperature hardened steel hot end and larger rubber feet to attach to the bottom of the enclosure and help reduce vibration in the work table. Kiti also makes their own filament that's designed specifically for printing at high speeds and they included a 500 gram spool with a dry box and desiccant to store it and keep it dry. Before powering up the printer I turned it on its side to make sure the power supplies were set to the correct voltage and then installed the rubber feet and power cable. Kiti provides a quick start menu for setting up the machine, but the touchscreen display also provides instructions for setup after it's powered up for the first time. So I followed those to finish unpacking before leveling the bed, which is done automatically after preheating and setting the Z offset using the paper that Kiti provides with the printer and the up and down arrows on the screen, which also has options for adjusting the distance that the bed moves with each press. I raised the bed until there was a slight amount of friction between the nozzle and the paper, then started the auto-leveling process. The printer then takes measurements around the build plate in a grid pattern so that it can make adjustments in the z-axis movements while it's printing, according to any deviations that it finds in the bed surface, which could change with temperature variations, so it's always best to do this after the bed is preheated to the recommended temperature for the filament that's being used. After the bed was leveled, the input shaping process began. As I mentioned earlier, this machine uses clipper firmware and input shaping to combat vibrations, so you can print it up to 600 millimeters per second without worrying about it messing anything up. Next, I loaded the PLA Repeato filament that Kitty provided into the dry box with the desiccant to keep it nice and dry even in my workshop with the doors wide open and the humidity ranging between 70 and 80%. Then I installed the dry box on the back of the machine and fed the filament into the PTFE tube and the filament runout sensor until it met resistance in the extruder. Then I preheated the nozzle to the recommended temperature and used the manual controls on the touchscreen to feed the filament into the hot end until it came out the nozzle. Once that's done, the setup is finished and it's ready to print. The home screen shows some basic information about the printer with temperatures displayed at the bottom right corner. On the tools page, you can adjust the nozzle and bed temperature for different tasks like bed leveling or changing the filament. The printer can also be controlled remotely through their slicer software and Wi-Fi or a network cable. After selecting a file from the USB drive, another page opens that shows a picture of the model, the type of filament that the G-code was generated for, how much time it's going to take to print and how much filament it's going to use in both kilograms and meters. There's also an option to level the bed before printing the file. When the print is finished, the HF build plate can be easily removed from the magnets holding it to the bed and with a little bend the model should pop right off. It looks like everything is working fine so far.
Next, I printed the Benchy file that's stored on the USB drive too. At 600 millimeters per second, this only took 17 minutes to print, and it looks like the input shaping did a good job compensating for the vibrations at that speed. I do see a small indentation on the back and the front, but other than that it turned out pretty good for the speed. Kitty also included a G-code for a fidget cube. So I gave that a try too. Again, there were no problems. The print turned out great, all the parts broke loose easily and it works. I printed off a few more logos and benchies to make sure they were consistent before installing Kitty's slicer on my PC and attempting a custom print of my own. Their slicer is based on Prusa slicer, so if you've used Prusa before then this will probably look familiar. It has everything you could possibly need including three different modes depending on your skill level, so you can choose easy mode if you're a beginner and just want to keep things simple, or you can use advanced or expert mode if you want to customize more. As I mentioned earlier, you can also connect the printer and their new camera to their slicer and control and monitor everything remotely. The project that I'm working on next is the enclosure for my electric motorcycle battery, which needs to be strong but somewhat flexible. So I imported the CAD for the top and bottom portions and set the infill to 50% grid, which should be more than strong enough and save a bit of time printing. After checking the other settings, I click the slice button to generate a G-code for it. After slicing, it gives the total print time and filament requirement, and a box appears on the left that shows information like temperature, speed, and how much time and filament each process is going to take, so you can make adjustments accordingly before exporting. I had to switch the filament because there wasn't going to be enough on the spool that Kitty supplied for this project, and PLA wouldn't have been strong enough anyway. I purchased the PETG filament for this project before I received the Kitty, but it's not high speed filament, so I used the presets in Kitty slicer for generic PETG, which has a print speed range from 70 to 300 millimeters per second for different parts and layers.
For a generic filament, the parts turned out pretty good. There were no issues with extrusion or speed, but I did have to use a glue stick on the bill plate to get the first layer to stick. That's usually needed for a PETG filament on almost every bill plate anyway, so that's not a big deal. The parts stayed in place and didn't warp at all. I'm really happy with the result. I assembled a few pieces before I started recording to help speed things up. I'm just doing a dry assembly for now to show you folks how everything fits and what the modules will look like, because I still need to install a couple of thermistors to keep an eye on temperature which haven't been delivered yet, so I'll have to open them back up later to do that. The Kitty has an impressive print volume which made it almost perfect for this project, but the size of the enclosure were just an inch too long to print in one piece, so I split them in two with a shiplap joint to shed water and reinforce them with steel rods. Later, these joints will be glued together with JB Weld, and the corner joints will be sealed with black silicone. After installing the connector for the balance wires, I turned the module on its side and fastened the acrylic panels that I made a couple of weeks ago with my new laser engraver. You can check out that video on my channel if you're interested. I'm just using nickel plated wood screws to fasten everything, but I'm going to use flat black screws for the final assembly so they blend in better, as well as silicone gaskets between the panels and the enclosure to keep it watertight. So that's it for this video folks. I'm really happy with how these modules turned out. I was having a lot of issues trying to print the enclosures with my hobby machines and I nearly gave up on the idea of printing them all together until Kitty reached out. This machine was a godsend and no doubt will be a very useful tool for many projects in the future. If you enjoyed this video then let me know with a thumbs up or a comment below and make sure you subscribe because in the next video I'm going to use this machine to make the headlight fairing for the electric motorcycle. Until then, thanks for watching and take care folks.